Gentlemen, welcome back to the T. Shanley Starting a Business, Building a Brand Vlog. This one, big number. 238. 238, and I've got a very special, spicy senorita in the Tiege Hanley business vlog house. So, here's the deal. My wife was coming to my office today. Um, she had to come here, do a little bit of work, and um, I said, you know why? I've, while I've got you, I might as well use this opportunity to uh, ask you a few questions and make the vlog more interesting than normal. Uh, are you excited to be here? I am so excited, I can't stand it. <laughs> Good. So, uh, for those of you who saw the video where my wife came on and, and we did like kind of like a Q&A on the Alpine YouTube channel, um, there were some, some business questions, but it really was focused around, you know, her and I like being together and like questions about that. But today, what I wanted to do, I have some questions for her or for you. Um, revolving around being married to an entrepreneur because something that I realized, and it took me a while because I was, I was pretty self-centered and didn't understand the impact that my profession and my journey in this sort of thing that I was trying to do in terms of starting a business, how much it affected you. And I was sort of, I was sort of blind to that, but I realized after, you know, the failure and then sort of, you know, just everything that I've been doing that, um, that your support system and the person that you have chosen to be with, that's going to stick by your side or not stick by your side is, is part of your story and a critical component to your success as an entrepreneur. And so my first question for you is a question that gets asked all the time. Did you think about why didn't you leave me when I was broke and like going through like bankruptcy and, and, why, like explain that because people keep asking that and I'm like, I don't know. Well, why didn't you? Um, well, I loved you. Well, I know that's not really like the real, the, you know, that because sometimes you can love somebody, someone and it not be like a healthy situation. But even at your worst times, like I didn't, I never felt like our relationship was going in an unhealthy direction. Like you didn't go through a bad time and stay at home and sit on the sofa with a Budweiser in one hand and your hand down your pants with the other doing nothing, watching TV. That was never you. You were always the, the driven, the hungry, um, just desire for more, more, this isn't enough, I need something. Like you, you never stopped. No, um, no. no, I didn't so stop. you weren't lazy. If you were the lazy, you were the failure and you let it beat you down and you just curled up in a ball, that would have been a problem. Yeah. That would have been a big problem. Yeah. But you never, even at the worst, did that. Yeah, something no. else, um, just to, to give uh, my wife credit, um, when I was driving the beer cart, <laughs> what did you do? I came and I drove too and it sucked. <laughs> Uh, so that is so the part of the beer awful. card story that, that we never talk or that I never talk about. Um, when I was doing that, I was doing it for a little while, and um, and Tracy is like, I was working full time too. She was working full time. And I felt like you know what, if he's gonna do the part time job too, I'll do the part time job. And it was cold as hell out there. <laughs> it sucked. I mean, it was like rain or shine. We had to drive a beer cart. So yeah, so she came and it she. It was a shit job. Sucked. How long did you do it? Not as long as you. No. But I, I did it for a while. It was support, and so I thought that was that was really cool. And um, and back then it allowed us to kind of be together. And this was before we we got married. Um, my next question is about being married to an entrepreneur. You know, things are different now than when we first got together. I mean, you met me when I had my fitness center and I was trying to make that whole dream a reality. That didn't work. Um, what is the worst part about being married to an entrepreneur? Not necessarily like me, the YouTuber. That, right, not, not the career path. Yeah, not the entrepreneur. Yeah, like career. somebody who's an entrepreneur. Like what's the worst thing that um, you, what do you think the worst thing about it is? And this can be like our entire know. relationship. I don't know that I really think there's like a bad part to it. Um, you know, probably the bad part is over the years, there's been a lot of trial and error. I mean, how many times were you kind of like, okay, what do I do next? Yeah. And you just didn't know. And seeing you, there were times where you chose a path and I'm going to try this and it wouldn't work. 
And the <laughs> hardest yeah. part, yeah, like how many times? Like oh. How many things from oh. mail, postcard, advertising to... That's just what you do. Magazine ads. Well, that was just like, average, yeah. But st stuff like that where you're, you're, I think for so long, trying to build a business, you're in a period of... I don't know what to do next. Yep. What do I do? Like, what is the right thing to do right now? Because I don't want to make a mistake. I don't want to do the wrong thing. But it was hard to watch you at times try new things and it not work. One of the other things that um, I think about, you actually said to me one time, you know, as an entrepreneur, one of the things that you do is when you have an idea or when you're getting ready to start a business, like you get like super excited. Oh, I know what you're gonna say. And so, so <laughs> you're like, you're all like, oh my God, like isn't this incredible? And then you go to like your family, like you're asking your mom, your wife, your whomever, you're like, oh, isn't this gonna be awesome? Isn't this gonna be great? And one time you said to me, it's hard for me to get this excited all the time because you always have different things that you're getting excited about. And it actually stuck in my brain. I started thinking about that. And she was right. I was always coming to you with like the new idea or, oh, this is going to be great. And, and, oh my God, this is going to be incredible. And I was like, yeah, it's great. And you were like, you're not excited. You're not I'm excited. Like, honey, honey, I'm excited. I'm excited. <laughs> she wasn't excited, but you are not an entrepreneur, not no. even a little bit. No. And so that's something that um, I think that one of the reasons why it works well for us and possibly you and your relationship is that I'm an entrepreneur. I don't know that I'd be able to be married to another entrepreneur because the, the temperament that I have is very different than the temperament you have. And so your idea of working nine to five, you want to leave it at home. Mm -hmm. You don't have that yes. desire. No, I don't. I don't. I have no idea. See, I have no like desire to see. I see what you go through. I don't want to do that. No. You just don't want to. No, I'm perfectly secure with my corporate America career. I'm successful. I'm good at what I do. I'm, what do you do for a living? I'm a marketing director. For what? An engineering firm. Got it. Yep. And something really cool about Tracy is that, um, and something that I like admire about you is, is that she's like worked her way up through like a bunch of different uh, businesses, I mean, from... I don't have a college degree. No college degree. No, I chose to... I was offered, like, what I thought at the time was my first real job. Was it with Coke? It was with an, an Anheuser-Busch yep. distributor. I was sold Bud, Bud Light, McLight, all of those beers. But I thought at 21 years old, oh, my God, a sales job selling Budweiser, Bud Light. Oh, this is it. And it was not it. But I chose to not do college and start working. One of, um, one of the other things that I, I think I might have mentioned this before, um, I hope you're okay talking about it, but you know. Well, you, too late now. You're already like, <laughs> that's, out there. that's out of the bag. Um, is that you left home at a, at a young age, mm -hmm. right? And 16. 16, um, Tracy left home. Um, why? Um, uh, my parents drank heavily heavily my father died when i was five he had cirrhosis of the liver advanced at age 44. he passed away I was five my brother was eight and um, my mom drank a lot 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 like she would drink and not get out of bed for six or eight weeks and she had two small children in the house so leaving home at 16 sounds super young but we had been on our own for a long time we were totally unsupervised but you left and you still went to high school, yeah. you got finished. Yeah, my mom called the high school my first day of senior year to make sure I was there. I think she thought I wasn't gonna <laughs> yeah. finish. But all this to say, you know, Tracy didn't go to college. Um, you know, she has a, a, a great job now, you know, lot, you know, very, very good job, but she has worked her way up. And this is sort of a testament to, you know, you've got choices in life. You can let your situation and your circumstances dictate your future and where you're going if you have a victim mentality or you can decide that you're going to be successful despite your situation and your your environment and so one of the things that I admire most about you is that you have you know gone through it and and basically decided I'm going to be successful despite mm -hmm. my situation despite what my friends might be doing what you know my my you know, people that don't have the motivation and the drive. And so you've always been like a crazy hard worker. And so that's one of the things that I think attracted me, you know, the most to you from a early age other than your boobs. <laughs> <Thank> you. <That's laughs> 
Well, it was, it, was, it was your ability to sort of roll up your sleeves and get your hands dirty because that's what I understood. That's what I resonate with. And so um, that's been very, 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 you know, awesome just to, just to see. Anyway, the other question I would have is, is what's the best part about being married to an entrepreneur? Um, probably your success, finally. Seeing you go <laughs> from... I think I've t told you just, I feel like it was describing trying to break out of the entrepreneur almost like start to be, start to be successful as that entrepreneur and start to achieve those goals and to start see things happening. I compare it to you're down in this deep, dark hole and you're having to claw your way out. Well, you have clawed your way out at this point and you're successful and you know what works, you know what doesn't work. But I and, still screw things up all the time. Well, that's part. Any that's any business. That's <laughs> yes. any business. Things get screwed up at my job all the time. That's just part yeah. of it. Don't cover your mic. Sorry, um, but uh, seeing you, you have so much more knowledge now. You you do. You're like a whole different business person than when you were in your twenties mm. and when you were in your thirties. I feel like you've arrived. Does that make sense? It makes sense. It makes sense that you learn with every failure, with every success you learn. For me, I have learned the most through not succeeding, but through the failures and figuring things out. Um, it was interesting because I, I've talked about Linda on this vlog before. Okay. Um, and just the fact that it used to sort of upset me so much that she wouldn't be friends with me, but I really feel, and I think you sort of pointed this out, or maybe you didn't, or I just think that you did, um, that if she was still around, yes. I wouldn't have been able to sort of grow into the, sort of become a man. Like maybe, I, I maybe, she for Maybe she knew that. Maybe she, yeah, maybe, maybe. Let's give her a little credit. Credit, let's yeah. Totally she pushed me out of the nest. Maybe, maybe she knew that. <laughs> yeah. Who I, knows? I don't think, I don't think that was the motivation. I don't motivation. think so either, but, uh, but let's be sweet and say that. Exactly, let's be sweet. Um, Let's see. What other uh, what other advice would you have to the entrepreneurs out there that are that are watching this vlog? Um, being that you are not an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. what is uh, what would you say? Like you see what I do, you see what I go through. What is what is something that that they should learn that you have seen me do or not do or or whatever? Find a good mentor that can give you good, solid, sound advice. Do I have one? No, but there's been times <laughs> I've never had one. where you've um, there have been times where you've had someone tell you, you know what you need? You need a product. Yeah. You had people cross your path that really gave you good sound advice. Mm -hmm. Find keep talking to people. Network your butt off. Talk to people. Surround yourself with people you emulate. People who are successful. Pick their brains. Does that make sense? Yeah, and surround yourself with people you trust. Yes, people you trust, yes. That's a big thing. But find some good, like, mentor or five, like, people who could... See, but it's you hard, help. but it's hard. See, the mentorship, and I'm sorry to cut you off, mentorship is hard, right? Because cause you hear a lot about mentorship, and I get emailed often about, hey, will you be my mentor, will you be my mentor? And, and the problem is that when you're approaching these people that are successful, that are doing it or whatever, and people you want to emulate, it's, it's really no value to them other than just to feel good that they helped you. Well, the truth is that a lot of entrepreneurs, they are so focused and they are so busy like trying to figure their own stuff out still that they don't have time to sort of bring you under their wing. And so, sure. so one of the things that, that we've talked about is is you can learn a lot from other people through the platforms like Skillshare or reading, you know, audiobooks or reading audiobooks, see, <laughs> audiobooks um, or just books from people that have been there, got the t-shirt and have done that. And I think that's a place to start. But keeping your eyes open to see are there people in your life or around that you sort of could gather value from. And I've talked about this on, when was it? Actually, a, a video that I that I filmed talking about my net worth. That's <laughs> I'll, I'll, I, last week I talked about how I hate talking about money, but it's anyway, it'll make more sense when you see the video. But, um, but one of the downsides to growing up without a lot of money 
or without sort of means is that typically you're going to be surrounded by people of the same mindset. People that are surrounding you are like in my case, very blue collar. I didn't have people to even model myself or emulate in regards to, you know, finances. So you don't ever see saving. You don't ever see investing. You don't ever see that side of things. And that has been one of the hardest things that I have had to learn. And that is, is how to manage money, what to do with it, because I've never had that experience. And so, um, I don't know where the hell I was going with that. I don't but, know where you were going. You didn't like my answer about mentoring. That's no, I, I like, but it's, it's a common thing. I think mentoring is a common thing that a lot of people do. And, and I understand I, that people don't always have time to mentor and that's, that's fine. But I have seen periods in your career, whether you realize it or not, that you had meetings with people and you had the light bulb go yeah. off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen that happen with you. Yeah, so surround yourself, connect with people that are smarter than you. I think that's yeah. probably... Or further down that career path than you. That can learn, yeah, learn yeah. lessons. And, and it's... That one conversation, you need a product. Who was that, Ben out the dollar? I don't know, but that resonated... That and that was the start of something big. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was. It was. Yeah, and that so, was like a holy shit. This is working. You moment. can't curse on this. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, this was a okay, holy, holy crap. Yes. This is working. Yeah. Like okay, all right. Now, was it a huge, huge money maker? It was for a bit. That was the it Shark Tank. It was it. It was the Shark Tank. It was the, my first product was the Alpha M Style System. Hey, but it was a it was a step in the right direction. Step in the right direction. And yeah, so. What about, uh, let's see, what about um, any other advice for potential entrepreneurs out don't there? Don't give up, and it's, it's cliche, but don't give up. You know, it, you know when you start to give, your, to give up and you're starting to feel beat down, ask yourself, how bad do I want this? But also don't be blind to the fact that sometimes you got to change directions. Yeah, that you've, too. You've mm -hmm. got to have glimpses of things are moving in the right direction. But yeah, and, and Kevin O'Leary, when I talked to him, he said, uh, I think it's three years. Give yourself three years, and if it's not working in three years, chances are it's not going to work in five. Mm -hmm. And um, you've got you've to read the writing on the wall, be honest with yourself. And, um, and, and that is very, very sound advice. Any closing words for the gentleman, Atij Hanley? Mm, closing words? What do you think of Atij Hanley, the business? When I told you about Atij Hanley, what did you think? Do you remember? Uh Really? I remember thinking, um, who are these guys? Yeah. Yeah, why, what, they want you to do what? And why? Okay. Yeah, like, I was skeptical. You didn't like the name either. I did like the name. You did? I did ask, I was like, what is that? And you told me it was a family name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you thought it would be successful? Yeah, yeah, I did. Me too. <laughs> All right. Well, gentlemen, uh, I think that's where I'm going to wrap things up. I think we've been talking now for like 18 minutes. Oh, my God. Great job, knuckle bump. That's what I'm talking about. Gentlemen, if you dug this video, why don't you drop Mrs. Alpha one of these to be like, yo, Mrs. Alpha, thanks for coming on and hanging with us. Gentlemen, if you have a business question down below, please start it with a business question and ask it. Next week, I'm going to give you that Tej Hanley update that I've been sort of teasing you about, but this week I had this opportunity, so I was like, I can't pass on it because this video will probably get more views than all of my other videos on this vlog. Gentlemen, they did, uh, see, I, I almost did the whole thing without screwing up. We love you more than our double monk strap shoes. If you have any questions regarding business, business question, I just said that down below. Next week, T. Shanley update, not to mention your amazing business questions. Guys, thank you so much for being a part of this. We love you, and we think you are amazing. Love you. Love you. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Go back to work. Bye. Bye.